I think the part that's hard for me to understand is why is mainstream media so against this movement? Is it because that then big food, big pharma would lose money? Is it or is it just because I'm against this? This goes against plant based and liberals tend to eat more, you know, I, I went to UC Berkeley and Berkeley tends to have a lot of plant based and it's also tends to be very liberal. So is it that is it just because it's an opposing view? I, I still am not clear. And I think you did such a great walkthrough. And I, I, I know that you don't want to say like, this is a reason, but do you have any sentiments of why they're so against? Yeah. I mean, there are a number of reasons, and I think some of them are more speculative than others, but yes. some are really very clear. And, you know, one is, let's start with the most generous interpretation that we can give, which is that there's just a lot of bias. People are biased and and they have their training, if they're doctors or the healthcare practitioners, they, they just have a long time bias or an intellectual kind of rigidity that's hard for them to overcome. Scientists have been devoting their entire careers to promoting plant-based diets. It's almost impossible for them to, to understand that maybe that everything they thought and studied and published on could be wrong. So that's one reason, just you know, intellectual bias. Um, then there's the very, very strong animal rights movement, which really just does not want to see animal, they don't want to see animals experimented on and they don't want to see animals eaten. There's sort of a front group for them called the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, PCRM, but they are, they're first and foremost an animal rights group. And then they put, some of them are doctors in white coats. And so they call themselves a physicians group, but really uh, according to an investigation done by the Journal of the American Medical Association, an, an author there that, that I think fewer than 18% of their members are actually physicians. So. It's just an example. There's many, many people who are motivated by animal rights. Also the funders of, of some, many of these documentaries, like somebody like James Cameron, who's done Game Changers and other documentaries. So that's another reason. A third is the, I think there's no question that the pharmaceutical industry is, they, they do not profit from people getting healthy. And, and so they are, they're in the business of selling, of, of serving, chronic disease, managing chronic disease through their drugs and devices and procedures. And, and, you know, if you get off kidney dialysis, you are no longer a profit center for them. So you just can't be too cynical about that. And I've written about the influence of the industry, like directly the, the fact that they fund the American College of Cardiology and how, how hostile that group is to low carb, including putting out you know, press releases on studies that never happened. I mean, it's really quite aggressive what the pharmaceutical industry does. The food industry, same story. And, and we know that these industries influence our dietary policy because I did a paper, co-authored a paper, showing that the expert committee leading the dietary guidelines in the last iteration for the 2020 guidelines, which we currently have, 95% of that 20 person committee had at least one tie with a food or pharmaceutical company and over, and half of them had 30 such ties or more. One member of the committee had 152 ties. I mean, these are things like sitting on a board, getting financing from being an advisor, scientific advisor to. So there's a lot of infiltration of food and pharma in the world of nutrition, in our policy and in they fund scientific studies. A, many, many studies are funded by industry. So yes, I think that's another motivation. And then I think that, let me just give you two more because it's a long list. And then there's the whole fake food industry, which has really sprung up in the last decade, but you know, fake impossible burgers, beyond burger or impossible meat, beyond beef burgers. The, there are companies that replace eggs, fish. There are companies that are replacing every natural food really on the planet that bill gates is developing fake fats i mean vegetable oils are also fake fats but he's developing even more fake fats to replace animal fats so those industries even though we know that say the meat replacement industry is not being successful i mean it's really tanking those industries are still great i mean to blow up that bubble like the Oatly bubble and make your 
hundreds of millions and then then the then the industry might tank or the company might tank, but still people are making money off of that kind of profiteering, um, that model. And then very, very powerfully in the last decade, we've seen the climate right. change movement, which is, which is possibly the most powerful force on the earth today, which is telling us we cannot be eating meat in order to save our planet. And in Europe, it's much more advanced than it is here, but it kind of gives you a picture of what might come to the US. I mean, they're actively shutting down farms. They're taking land away from ranchers. They're taxing, I'm not sure if they're taxing, but definitely proposing taxes on meat. And everybody has been encouraged to reduce meat and people are cutting back on meat as a result. So, and there are still real, you know, there are goals to have as in cut in half the consumption of meat by 2030. And that's the that's the UN goal for the entire planet. So, you know, all these forces coming together are extremely powerful. And, you know, it, it kind of, it sort of shows you that it's not just carnivore, but all of low carb, people who are low carb, who tend to eat more animal foods. I mean, it's, it's amazing where this movement is as strong as it is <laughs> given, <laughs> given all the forces lined up against it. But you know, people want to be healthy, and and I think that's absolutely one hundred percent legitimate. And and actually, I've heard from people who say, you know, I'd rather save the planet. And I, you know, I know that I'm suffering as a result. But I mean, I would never make that choice, and I certainly would never impose that choice on anyone else. But I mean, it's it's an individual choice that people can make. I would rather just not take an extra cross country trip or cancel my vacation and. Bali, which I don't have. But I mean, I you know, to me, that's a better choice. Right. And I think the medical industry as a whole, it has a bigger carbon footprint than even meat does. So I think there's all these nuances that they don't share. They even talk about how cows take so much water, but it's actually the recycled water, or a lot of their right. urine or the rainwater. And they don't talk about how well, cotton, and I think it was teas that use more of the blue, the clean water. So there's all these nuances that they just hate to share. But, you know, just from all the research that you've done, whether it's talking to the carnivores, whether writing the big fat surprise, and then doing your journalism, and then being part of nutri or creating nutrition coalition, it seems like it's never going to be a battle we can win. But what have you seen from all your journalism of you know, there are, there are movements still like the carnivore diet that we can still find health amidst all of the stuff that's against us. So I have, I guess, a couple of answers to that. One is that the work that I did in the Nutrition Coalition is resulting in change that I can't talk about yet. So some of that work, you know, trying to mobilize Congress on this issue, trying to, which we didn't do super publicly because some of this stuff just has to happen more quietly, but that, that I think we may be able to produce some meaningful change at the national level. And then beyond that, I think, and some, sometimes I feel very pessimistic about sort of the state of even like the freedom of the press, like our ability to have our ideas be heard, um, to access larger audiences and for those of us who are journalists and who are writing, how do we, you know, how do we, all I can say is, you know, Gary and I started our newsletter. Well, I started it a little over a year ago and we already have almost 45,000 subscribers, mm -hmm. which maybe, you know, it's not like Ken Berry's 3 million people, but I mean, a lot of our subscribers are academics and policymakers. And so I know that we're reaching some of the right ears. And then beyond that, I think that it is going to need like a lot, a lot of bottom up change. And that happens, I mean, through your listeners and, and your readers and everybody following you, most importantly, people need to fix their own health and learn how to do that, which can be hard. And then you have to help your family and your loved ones, and then move out to your community beyond that. And then, and then I do think there's going to be some level of mobilization needed. So I was never in the business of like mobilizing a movement of people, but I think there are efforts currently being organized. I know Ken Berry wants to start something called the American Diabetes Society, as opposed to the established American Diabetes Association, right. which would kind of be a patient advocacy group. And I think that would be fantastic. You know, I, I had always envisioned like a, a million 
person metabolically wounded march on washington <laughs> so you know people taking like holding alongside their like before pictures like just like marching on washington i i think eventually something like that is is just going to have to happen but making yourself strong first i mean one of the things that when our health is taken from us and when we have brain fog and we're don't feel well and we can, can't get out of bed and we don't have energy, like it's actually robbing us of our vitality and humanity and who we are can be as humans. And that is, so we first need to restore to ourselves that kind of vitality that allows us to be fully citizens of our country. Um, you know, we need to have the energy to, to, to fight if that's, you know, if people choose to take on that. Right. They need I, to do well first. Right. I think when I was talking to you, I was telling you that we've probably worked with over 2000 carnivore clients and patients and everyone is really sick in some form or fashion. And whether it's that the carnivore diet isn't moving the needle enough, so they maybe have to look at other things. But most of these people are not doing it for biohacking reasons. It's because they're sick. And like we said, standard care isn't working enough, maybe some medication, some autoimmune diagnosis, even with a label, it's not fixing them to have that vibrant health. Then they try carnivore. And I don't know a single person that doesn't heal something. Maybe it's not everything, but they don't heal something by eating a carnivore diet that reduces inflammation. And then when they have that ability to feel better and not be in bed or stuck in bed or have histamines or every other illness that makes them have to be in bed and not be able to be their full selves, then they can even think about, well, can I help my neighbor? Can I help my family? Can I help my children? Can I be the person that I'm meant to be? And that's why people want to do a carnivore diet because they want their life back. They want to yeah. be able to feel normal when we should, every single one of us should have that right. And I think that's where carnivore with all these hip pieces are, it's so sensationalized in the wrong way. And so I get, I mean, I don't talk about it much, but we have our, our kid school has a lot of functional doctors and and they're so against carnivore. So I always say, unless you try it, I don't really care to hear what you have to say, because unless you try it and know that it can do wonders, it's, it's really such a moot point to say, well, the studies show, well, of course, there's no, no one is going to do a study on carnivore diet versus a plant-based or a standard American diet to show healing other than that Harvard poll. But we need to do more things like that. But it's really hard when, when, the Mediterranean diet and all these other, all the studies that you were able to find that show and all the demonizations, even if we misconstrue the results, um, there's so much support for the other side that says, yes, a carnivore diet is going to cause you heart disease and such. And so it's just, it's really unfortunate. Well, we've like, we all live in an environment where, I mean, I don't, the, like propaganda might be too strong a word, but we have lived in a media environment where we're constantly barraged with these messages, you know, plant-based is best, Mediterranean diet for this, that, and the other thing, you know, and, and low carb is bad for you and beware of that diet. And so, I mean, I don't blame people for being misinformed because this is our, that's our media environment and we all were those people. So we just happened to, like really kind of get, you know, see through the looking glass, you know, step to the other side and understand, I mean, many people change their diet. They don't even understand how, you know, why it is that these misinformed articles are still coming out. I mean, I've been studying the politics and the, and the conflicts of interest in this so long. I think I have a pretty clear picture of why this is all happening, but, but I don't, I don't blame people for being misinformed. I mean, even doctors are misinformed. Everybody's misinformed. So, and they don't even realize the extent to which they're biased. But I do want to say, when you say there's no experiments on carnivore, remember there is that one year experiment mm -hmm. on, on Stephenson. Uh, Stephenson. Yeah. Back in when they, in, in 1928, where partially he and a colleague were they spent part of it in a New York hospital, but there were like 10 publications that came out of that where they measured everything they knew how to measure uh, in 1928 or 29, and they were in perfect health. Mm -hmm. So that's just, an, that's a very tiny experiment, but you're right. There's no, there's no clinical trial on carnivore and it probably would not even get ethical board approval mm -hmm. to conduct such a trial. And meanwhile, the vegan diet, which is known to be nutritionally insufficient 
in major dangerous ways is continually steady. I don't studied and that shows harm. You know, you like the latest study by Christopher Gardner at Stanford, who is vegan and his entire center is underwritten by Beyond Meat. He did a study on the vegan diet and in eight weeks, people's B12 stores plummeted by like 73%. That is dangerous. Right. So that, you know, that should have been headlines all over the world, really. A vegan diet endangers your health, seriously endangers your health, but but that's not the environment that we live in. So yeah, all I can say is, you know, I'm sympathetic to people who are misinformed. I'm really far less sympathetic with somebody like Christopher Gardner or some of these nutrition experts who truly know better. They know the studies. And we can talk about Christopher Gardner. I mean, his first study that he ever did was a comparison of four diets where the low carb diet outperformed every other diet. That was his very first study. It was the largest and longest study he did. And after that, he stopped he stopped testing the low carb diet because it would outperform what he we, he wanted to be successful, which is the vegan diet that he was ideologically attached to. Anyway, I'm much less patient with the nutrition experts because you know they should know the literature and they, they all know who I am. I'm pretty sure of that by now. And they don't like me obviously, but I mean, they should know better. And they're, they're perpetuating incorrect, non-evidence-based ideas, either based on their own, you know, their own biases or their own ideological beliefs. And I feel like that's not acceptable when people are suffering so much. It's not acceptable in any case.